All right, coming up next, it's a heavyweight collision between the Black Beast, Derek Lewis, and Francis Ngannou. All right, so here is the heavyweight power threat, Francis Ngannou. Couple of outliers on his resume, the weird fight against Derek Lewis, but he came back in a big way. Back-to-back -back knockouts of Curtis Blades and Cain Velazquez that put him right back into heavyweight title contention. If you're a fan of the sport and you see a young fighter like Francis Ngannou, that's exactly the type of response you want from him when he had a rough go. Go back to the drawing board. Come back remotivated. Focus on the task at hand. Start knocking people out. Get back. Use what got you to the show in the beginning. In the knockout of Blades, in the knockout of Kane, showed that Francis Ngannou is once again ready to move himself back into title contention. And his knockout of Alistair Overeem in 2017, the knockout of the year, Spaceship. according to most. Spaceship. Overeem's still in orbit. Yes, he is. He has to be. All right, so here's the former world title challenger, the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. Of course, you have shared the octagon with this man, and they don't pack much more power than this guy in this heavyweight division. No, some guys are blessed with a power that's just jarring, and Derek Lewis is one of those guys. He's so big, he's so strong, he's deceptively quick when he's in there, and he's unbelievably athletic. He will throw double kicks, and you think that he's going up with the left leg, but then the right leg lands, he throws the right hand from anywhere, and the moment he lands, he can put your lights out. And it does not matter the time of the round. Yeah. Derek Lewis can finish him at any moment in the fight. And he's a guy who's also been a real workhorse for the UFC. Made his debut back in 2014. He did have a recent knee surgery. Let's see how he comes out of it here tonight. Our tale of the tape for this heavyweight fight. Ngannou is 33. Lewis is 35. He weighed in at 260 pounds. Ngannou will have a four-inch reach advantage. All right, now for the official introductions. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 15 wins, three losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France, Francis, the Predator, and God! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A boxer holding a professional record of 23 wins, seven losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 260 pounds, fighting out of Houston, Texas, Derek the Black Beast Lewis. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Bergliata. Dan Mergliotta, your referee. You ready? All right, so we got two classically trained strikers here. Any chance this fight actually goes to the ground? This fight does not go to the ground. This one will be fought in the pocket. Two guys will stand in front of each other. They will trade punches. They will trade kicks. It's going to be a classic matchup that you normally see inside of a ring. We get it in the octagon tonight. Well, we told you off the top he had the reach advantage, and you saw it right there with that punch. Well, lands a good series of kicks there, DC. It really didn't take him long to get a good beat on his opponent. He figured the timing, and now he's been driving kick after kick into his opponent. Shot to the body here, blocked by him. Well, the left hook has been there at times, not that time. The Black Beast gets caught with that punch. Oh, huge left hand from Francis Ngannou. Every time he loads up 
and extends, you feel like the fight might be in. Yeah, absolutely. And the whole crowd holds their breath, right? right? You hear a big exhale. Every time Francis loads up to finish a fight, you hear the crowd take all the air in yeah. because they're ready to explode. The hip toss as he takes him down. Now we'll see what he can do. Right into side control. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here. And if you're the opponent, you got to intelligently defend or the referee's going to stop the you got to defend. But you can see him now start to gain posture and the intensity at which he's throwing these ground strikes is starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pat. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Sound strike on the ground. Oh, excellent pressure here from top position by Lewis. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. All right, so he's got the body locked down here, DC, or so it appears. This is not a guy you want anywhere near your back. Final minute. Lewis is right back to the full mount. Oh, man. Ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. This man has embraced it, and you are seeing why. He's one of the best that we've seen do it in a long time. All right, no Telestrator for DC tonight, but we'll get you some replays. And if you like face punching, that was a good round. Yeah, where's my Telestrator, man? I want to draw this action. But yeah, John, you're right. It was the striking, it was the punches that really did allow him to take control of this round. All right, so here we go with our next round, and there was a lot for him to like defensively in the previous round, almost as if he's one or two steps ahead of his opponent in terms of seeing the strike before it came his way. He did a great job of moving his head as his opponent was attacking, but then when his opponent tried to straight combination together, it was his block defense that was really saving the day for him. Oh, beautiful jab there. It's one thing to have length, of course, it's another to use it effectively. Beautiful job with that jab. Straight right lands. Over and over, landing big body kicks. Big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. And they separate. Oh, that'll ring your bell. Head kick. An uppercut lead. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? If your opponent has you in the clinch, pulling down on your head, landing punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar tie, reach back to side, and try to find space. Starting to do some really significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. DC didn't take him long to find his range here. To, oh, and he hip tosses into the mat. Now we'll see what he can do from here, DC. Right into side control. He's going to try to control him, then find a submission. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Got his lower jaw now starting to show signs of swelling. Just over two minutes to go. Outstanding combination of ground and pound punches here by the Black Beast. Oh, trying to pass here, but Dikembe Mutombo style, Blocks. he gets denied. Blocks! Great job blocking that pass by the bottom fighter. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. 
I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Close guard. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the kimura. It's in there deep. There you go. his opponent by way of submission. Well, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled. He's so tricky and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. So there he is, your winner by submission. That is a finish they will likely be talking about for some time. Big win, major statement made to the rest of this division. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee has called a stop to this contest. Declaring the winner by tap out, Francis the Predator Engano. All right, so there he is, all smiles, and rightfully so, after he gets the job done by submission tonight. You told me off the air before the fight that he was going to submit him, and that's exactly what happened. Man. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard, and his opponent is known to lay in the guard. He made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory.